Welcome to this video and thank you for tuning in. The focus of this presentation is on the Neisseria species and some of their important sugar fermentation reactions. The carbohydrate utilization pattern is what you are looking at here, a table that can be used to presumptively differentiate the species. Uh, in most clinical laboratories, we generally rely on the API 20E system uh, for the identification of most isolates of clinical importance. However, for the ASCP exam review, it is important to commit this table to memory. And uh, here is how. You would need to do the following. You would need to have flashcards. And then two, you would need to craft, develop some mnemonics. Mnemonics. You make yourself a flashcard of this table and try to memorize it and review it as often as possible. As a further aid in the memorization process, I generally recommend that you develop some kind of mnemonic that will help you to accurately reproduce this table if and when needed in the exam hall. Here is an example. Uh, if you look at the first letter of each species here, you have G for gonorrhea, M for meningitis, S for Zika, and L for lactamica. So you have the following. You have G, and then you have uh, M, and then you have S, and then you have L. By some fortuitous coincidence, you also find the same letters G for glucose, M for maltose, and S for sucrose, and L for lactose. So it, it just fits in neatly. So uh, my mnemonic is says G say give me give me sex lady. Now if that sounds vulgar you can recast it and say for instance give me some love or give me some lactose but whatever you do uh, choose something that you know you will be familiar with and you can recall and keep in mind that sex and gonorrhea uh, next door neighbors so that will help you recall when you um, are in an exam setting all right now here is a table i've told you what to do in regard to flashcards and then what to do with regard to building or crafting a mnemonic what else do we have to watch out for well we have to watch out for what i call spoilers these spoilers are generally um organisms that masquerade as neisseria by mimicking the morphological appearance of uh, the genus when stained in the lab. I came up with um, an acronym, MAK, which should be simple to remember, to represent these uh, organisms. The M here stands for Morazella. And then the A stands for Asanetobacter. Asanetobacter. 
and then finally the K stands for Kingela so when you use that word mark then you remember exactly what you're dealing with or what you should be remembering okay we start with uh, Moragzela in the Moragzela genus there are two important species I'd like you to uh, keep in mind as possible spoilers Moragzela cataralis and Moragzela osloensis the next one would be Sanitobacta and then the last one will be Kingela in particular Kingela denitrificans these three groups here can be a source of confusion not only on the you know on the bench in the laboratory but also uh, in your, on your desk in the exam hall that is why it is important to know them and see and therefore recognize them when they be, begin to act as spoilers for you uh, in the case of uh, Moragzella uh, they are generally gram negative diplococci and uh, Moragzella cateralis, for instance, is a normal flora of the upper respiratory tract, and its its spectrum of uh, infection or activity therefore is limited to the respiratory tract. The Moragzella osloensis is also a normal flora in the urogenital tract, therefore, it's not uncommon to find. Um, vaginal secretions contaminating endocervical smears that are used to make slides for in the cases of uh, um, suspect gonorrhea case and then we move on to the Asanetobacter the Asanetobacter are generally opportunistic organisms and common colonizers of uh, hospitalized patients and therefore um, may be mistaken for Neisseria species. Why? Because they are also Coco bacillary in shape. Finally you have Kingella. If you recall the Kingella denitrificans uh, is a member of the Hasek group which I presented in an earlier video. Uh, it's also another opportunistic pathogen of the uh, uh, of the human, and uh, actually has a low virulence. And it, it, the thing about it is that it can stain as um, somewhat short, plump cocoa bacilli, with a tendency to have uh, squared ends and uh, may form a bit of a little colony. But then. It also has the ability to grow on Thea Martin agar and therefore be mistaken for Neisseria gonorrhea on microscopic examination. Fortunately, K denitrificants uh, can reduce uh, nitrate, unlike the gonococcus. The oxidase test is another key um, diagnostic tool we fail to mention and if uh, an organism is oxidase positive and it's a gram negative diplococci it is most probably a Neisseria because all Neisseria are oxidase positive so we'll put the sign here positive uh, if on the other hand the organism is oxidase negative 
then it is more than likely to be an assigned to bacter species. You will recall that uh, for the quality control of the oxidase test, uh, it is um, typical uh, customary to use uh, Asanobacter IO5 A EO5 as a negative control and uh, you use an organism like uh, Pseudomonas aeruginosa as a positive control this is because these species are all oxidase negative but that's not the main point. The main point here is to go back to this table we had earlier and further attempt a breakdown based on maltose fermentation. Let's take another look at it. You will see here that um, these three ferment lactose. Only Nesera gonorrhea does not ferment lactose. So on the basis of maltose fermentation, we can have two groups. Maltose fermenters and non maltose fermenters. So we go back here and then say, ask the question is it a maltose fermenter? So we we'll say maltose fermentation. Let's just leave it at that for brevity. And if the answer is yes, then we know that we are dealing with. Uh, these are the three species. We know right off the bat that we're dealing with, we could be dealing with Neisseria meningitis, or we could be dealing with Neisseria seca, or we could be dealing with Neisseria lactamica. Okay, now if on the other hand, the maltose fermentation, maltose fermentation is negative, then we know we could be dealing with Neisseria gonorrhea. even with an entirely different organism, Morazella. Species. Uh, in particular, uh, Morazella cataralis. Cataralis. It used to be previously known as Morazella no, actually, Brahamella cateralis, but this is the more modern name, Moraxella cateralis. Now, we already have known about this tree from our table. Now, over here, we could do one of two things. We could go back and say, and say to ourselves, does this organism grow on nutrient agar? nutrient agar growth if the answer is no which should be the case with Neisseria gonorrhea then we will know exactly that we are dealing with Neisseria gonorrhea because it does not grow at uh, uh, on nutrient agar at uh, 35 degrees centigrade however Moraxella will grow on nutrient agar. The other differentiating factor would be nitrate reduction. Nitrate reduction. The Neisseria gonorrhea do not reduce nitrate to nitrite. But uh, Moraxella cateralis would do th just that. So you see Based on these two reactions, we can now um, identify with 
certainty the organism or the isolate we are looking at. Now, overall, we have dealt with two main pathogens here, and um, this is one of them, and then this is another one. It's not like these ones are not, but these are the ones that we pay attention to for the most part because of their clinical importance. The Neisseria meningitidis is a leading cause of uh, fatal bacterial meningitis. And then the Neisseria gonorrhea is a leading cause of sexually transmitted disease. One other thing I must point out is there is another, there are several Neisseria species which are spoilers really, but one of them I will mention in regard to this group here. And that is uh, Neisseria uh, cinerea. Cinerea. Now, why this organism? Well, this organism has the ability to present a weak glucose reaction here. So you look at this place and you find a, a, a reaction. It could well be Neisseria cinerea. But Neisseria cinerea uh, will grow uh, on nutrient agar at this temperature. Whereas Neisseria gonorrhea will not. So these are, this is another spoiler or another masquerade or organism that tries to confuse the um, technologists in the course of the identification of the Neisseria of medical importance. So with this scheme, I would uh, bring this presentation to a close. I wish you the very best as you prepare for exams. Thank you.